Good morning, folks. We've got the sun, the comet, weather, science news, and some more detail than usual on the atmosphere electric. We're watching plasma filaments dance in 304 angstrom, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star completely quiet, despite the large filaments around the limb. A couple small coronal holes here and there, but no solar flares, and the solar wind is very quiet at Earth as well. So we look ahead to the return of an active region. You can see its magnetic field structure over the limb incoming, while Stereo A has a perfect shot of the active group, ready to turn back on to the Earth-facing half. We did have a little sun dive and comet come in the last day, been a couple of Kreutz intruders here the last week. This one burned up and away on approach. Well folks, the big storms continue to drop by the day in the U.S. Here's the next day forecasted through GFS, severe storms attacking the Midwest, Canadian border, and then the Mississippi as night rolls on. Folks, Europe is enduring a record-breaking heat wave at the moment. Meanwhile, there is another problem in the States. A record fall snow coverage and way above average snowpack in the winter has been parlayed into crop catastrophe by the cold, wet May and June. This is not a good recipe for bumper crops. Let's do some booms. Up first, you may have heard about the meteor visible on the lightning detector of GOES. While you can't see any impression made in the dust, cloud, or ash detectors, the small rock exploded in the atmosphere and lit up the screen in the Caribbean. Also want to take a moment to demonstrate what a major atmospheric injection looks like. This is the eruption cloud from that Russian volcano a week ago. Folks, most of the releases we see from the weekly volcano upticks do not get much above the clouds, if at all. It is the major stratospheric injections, however, that drive the volcanic forcing of this planet. This is even a minor version of it. Let's step into the news with a pretty sight. Whirlpool Galaxy and various combinations of visible and infrared light courtesy of Spitzer. ESA is up next with more detail on DART and Hera, the asteroid-satellite duo set to reach, impact, and study the binary rocks. Sticking with fun for one more moment as a few ESA scientists had some fun imagining what it would look like to plot potential space missions to other stars. If, say, we had the technology to reach them in months, perhaps this is how we'd spread through the galaxy. Now, we're going to transition quickly to important details for science. This simple animation is the result of a program used to try to simulate thundercloud clustering. They are saying that the anomalous clustering of clouds that is observed in the world may be self-generating as they do push down and out and would help to lift other regions' air masses. Well, that is a fun idea and a very simplified concept, but unfortunately for them, the atmosphere is a bit more complex than that. The storms stick together for the same reason they generate together in specific regions, from pressure overlay to thunderstorms and rain. Interesting line hugging only one side of that system, but why? Well, when we focus again on the wind, we find that to be the collision zone. Not only is this where the kinetic activity should be the most intense as the air masses collide, but those air masses coming together must equalize their moisture, temperature, pressure, and electric potential all along that thin line of convergence. That is where you find the chemistry equalizing, that is when you find the energetic release, and that is where you find the storms. This does in fact work everywhere in the world. While rain will wrap into some portions of the total low pressure region, the major storms will cluster together due to both kinetic squeeze and the electrodynamical activity demonstrating that it's not just the pressure column axes surging the global electric circuit, but everywhere there is lightning too. For those looking for a new topic to dive down into, I recommend Dwarf Nova and their magnetic progenitors. Rather than being a burst from a star itself, this is the stellar electromagnetism surging the surrounding disk to life, making it glow and emit at amazingly higher energies. Interesting topic. Folks, a few scientists wanted to understand the kink blob in a streaming gas cloud, so they modeled a massive dark matter object crossing the stream. It is noteworthy that 1. A rogue planet or cold brown dwarf star would do the same. 2. They found similar kink blobs in streams related to galactic center interactions rather than some mysterious dark object. And 3. Pretty impressive to model the interactions of something that is wholly unknown. The latest, by the way, in the failure to find evidence for dark matter is the kids' 450 observations, teaming up with Planck to remind us just how imaginary articles like this one really are. 
Observers, we say goodbye to Catherine McDonald. She was the most prolific helper in the comment section, a core, loving community member for years, and she completed her journey one week ago. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your win maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.